Good morning. I want to share something I picked up from this book, He Gets Us, that the people that do the whole He Gets Us campaign put together a little book uh, experiencing the confounding love, forgiveness, and relevance of Jesus. And then they pick up some different writings by Max Lucado as well. So here's a question. How did Jesus deal with injustice? I mean, was there injustice in his world? I mean, no. I mean, that was back when everybody walked around with a halo on, right? I remember one dad telling me about his son. He goes, he really dislikes injustice. Now, i got to ask you something. How many people like injustice? Now, I get it. Some people are really... Um, I, right. Some people are just... It drives them crazy, okay? And they're going to become advocates and all that. But I hope there's nobody that's like, oh, love injustice. So... Jesus faced a lot of controversy. He uh, was often the, the object of unjustifiable hatred. I remember I brought up something about Jesus being hated. And somebody's like, oh, that's too, hate's a strong word. I'm like, they crucified him. Just, I mean, let it sink in. So, how did Jesus not respond? So, for one thing, uh, there were people that spat at him, struck him, slapped him, uh, did all the kinds of stuff. He didn't even retaliate. I know we talked about walking, walk the walk, talk the talk, you know, that whole thing. It's, it's a lot easier to talk about it than it is to walk it. But Jesus really did. So, in the Gospels, it says when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and this is from a version that I don't normally read, and I don't have, I don't have it right in front of me, but uh, ask me. I'll, I'll tell you later. So, Jesus says to his disciples, get up, we must go. Look, here comes the man who has turned against me. Now, normally we'd say betrayed. It's Judas. We understand that. But turned against me. Well, I find that wording interesting. Why? Because that could be a lot of people. That could be Peter, James, and John. It, it could have been spoken about Thomas or Andrew and Nathaniel. And uh, it could have been spoken about Pilate and Herod and Caiaphas. See, we kind of put Judas in this category by himself. But when it says, somebody who's turned against me, you know, in some way, shape, or form, since I've been following Jesus, I've turned against him. I, I've forgotten about him when I certainly shouldn't have forgotten about him. But, you know, the crowd turned on him, too. And these are like normal people in the crowd. Okay, if you ask them without the rest of the crowd there, you know, what's, oh, I'm just trying to pay my bills. I'm trying to get my, my kids fed. And, you know, but then you get this mob out there and they start chanting, crucify him. So they all turned on him. They suffered from mob blindness. The religious leaders certainly did that. But then you take betray. Okay? You know, you just wonder how Jesus feels about injustice. He was the most innocent human being who ever lived, and he died a torturous death. And then Judas comes along, and Jesus calls him friend. He gives him a kiss that's not what a kiss is for. Michael Card wrote a great song about that many, many years ago. But, and Max points this out. The word betray is an eighth of an inch above betroth in the dictionary, but a world from betroth in life. To betray or to betroth, to promise to give everything to somebody or to betray them. It would have been better if it was a stranger, right? If you've been betrayed by somebody close to you, you that's, that's what betrayal is. It can't be somebody far away. It, it's somebody that it couldn't have been. But it was. So rejection opens a wound. Betrayal pours the salt. It's more than loneliness. Loneliness leaves you cold. But betrayal closes the door. And that's what Jesus experienced. And, you know, Max mentioned something about somebody that, that he talked to, an unsigned letter. My husband just told me he had an affair two years ago. I feel so alone. There's so many people who go through so many different things. But Jesus, of all the things that he could have called Judas, calls him friend. And even though Judas betrayed him, I believe Jesus still looked at him as a friend. How did Jesus operate that way? Well, maybe it just comes down to the fact of what he said to Pilate. He said, my kingdom does not belong to the world. My kingdom is from another place. Jesus heads up a kingdom of love. He hates injustice for what it does to people. He experienced all of it. He absorbed it. He overcame it. May we learn to walk more and more in the steps of Jesus. God bless you. Have a great week.